Welcome to RK Tutorials. Solutions to Engineering Mechanics, 5th edition by S. Timoshenko, D. H. Eng, J. V. Rao, Sukumar, Party. In this tutorial, we will solve the problem set 2.1, problem number 2.14. For the particular position shown in the figure, the connecting rod BA of an engine exerts a force P is equal to 322.5 Newtons on the crank pin at A. Resolve this force into two rectangular components PH and PV acting horizontally and vertically respectively at A. The formula or concept that is required to solve the problem is rectangular components. Any force F can be resolved into two different forces if the angle between those two forces is 90 degrees then it is called rectangular components of forces. If the angle between those two forces is not 90 degrees, then it is called general components of forces. First consider this force. Let this force F makes an angle theta with the horizontal. You can resolve this force into two components one force is along x-axis, another force is along y-axis. The angle between this x and y-axis is 90 degrees, hence I can say it is rectangular components. What is the component of the force along x-axis? Remember, here the force F makes an angle theta with the x-axis, hence the x component is cos component and that magnitude is F cos theta. F and similarly, the component of the force along y axis is F y is equal to F sin theta. And what about the directions? A thumb rule I am saying for directions. If force is divergent, these two forces are also divergent. If this force is convergent, these two forces are also convergent. What do you mean by that? For example, if the same force I want to resolve here, this is my x-axis and this is my y-axis. And this makes an angle theta with the horizontal. Clearly you can see, as far as this point is concerned, this force is convergent. Hence, the two forces, one force act along x-axis, this is fx, direction is this one, fy direction is this one. All three forces must be convergent. But here, all three forces must be divergent. That is the thumb rule you can remember. Let us consider this second one. The same force F makes an angle theta with the y-axis. We would like to resolve this force along y-axis and x-axis. Since angle between x and y-axis is 90 degrees, we can consider these are the rectangular components. What is the directions of this force? Fx, this is divergent and Fy, this is also divergent. All three are divergent. And what is the magnitude of the forces? Fy. Since this F makes an angle theta with the Y axis, Y component becomes cos because it is at the center. And the other component becomes sine. This is the thumb rule you can find. The first thumb rule all forces must be either convergent or divergent. The second thumb rule is the adjacent side component 
becomes cos. Since this force makes theta with the y axis, so y component becomes f cos theta. Similarly, let us consider this, this force, f. This makes an angle theta with the y axis. I would like to resolve this force into along x and y axis. Angle between those two is 90 degrees. Since here also f is divergent, those two forces components must also be divergent, fx and f. Now here, this force makes an angle theta with the y axis, hence the y component becomes cos theta, horizontal component becomes sin theta. Same force, for example, I want to resolve here. Can you understand now? The same force I want to resolve here. As far as this point is concerned, this force is convergent and this makes an angle theta with the vertical. So the two components of the forces, one force is acting like this, another force will act like this. And this is, of course, Fx is equal to F sin theta. And this is Fy is equal to F cos theta. Okay. Now let us take the launched case. There is a force F which makes an angle theta with the x-axis. I want to resolve this force F. So as far as this point is concerned, this is divergent. So my force components are also divergent and this also makes an angle theta with the x-axis. Hence, x component becomes cos and y component becomes sine. So Fy becomes F sine theta and Fx is equal to F cos theta. So these are the rectangular components. And this is the force. This is the force P acting like this on crank pin A. This we would like to resolve into two rectangular components horizontally and vertically at point A. That means I want to resolve this force P along these two axes. In order to resolve this force, I must know the angle made by the force P with either x-axis or y-axis. For that, I will construct a small right angle here, OAC. OAC is a right angle. In that, angle O is given as 45 degrees. Let this angle is alpha. Let this angle is alpha. Now, from the right angle triangle OAC, sine 45 is equal to opposite side that is AC divided by 254 mm. Hence, I can calculate AC value as 179.6 mm. This AC value I got as 179.6 mm. Now I will consider the triangle ABC from which I can calculate the value of alpha. How I can calculate that alpha? So from right from uh, triangle ABC, sine alpha is equal to AC by the hypotenuse that, that is phi naught 8 m. So sine alpha is equal to AC value, just now we calculated 179.6 divided by this value as given as connecting rod length AB as given as phi naught 8. Hence I can calculate alpha 20.7. Now let us go to our actual problem. What I will do is I will transfer this x and y onto separate space so that I can easily understand the resolution of the forces. So just I am transferring this. This is my point A. This I will consider as my x-axis. This I will consider as my y-axis. Now, I am transferring the force P. This is my force P. I am transferring that force P onto my xy axis. 
Now, what is the angle? Now, this connecting rod, that is this force P, makes an angle alpha with the horizontal. Hence, this force P, that force, makes an angle alpha with the horizontal like this. Because if this angle is alpha, this angle must also be equal to alpha because opposite sides angles are same. And given that this alpha, or we calculated this alpha value as 20.7 degrees. And now, this P force, as far as A point is concerned, this P force is convergent. So, the component of the forces along X and Y must be convergent. So, the component of the force along X axis, that is PH, is along like this, towards point A. And the component of the force P along Y axis, that is PV, is towards downward, that is towards point A. These two are the directions of these two forces PH and PV. What about the magnitude? The force P makes an angle alpha with the PH component of the force, hence PH component becomes cos component. So, PH is equal to P into cos alpha. And the magnitude is 322.5 into cos 20.7, which is 2081.4. Similarly, the component of the force along y axis is Py and that Pv is equal to P into sin alpha that is 325 into sin 20.7 which is 786.5 newtons. These two are the answers for this problem. Let us transfer these two forces onto original xy axis. So, if we transfer that then I will get here, this is the component of PH and this is the component of PV. So, this is PH, this is PV and what about the original force? This is my original force, that is P. My dear friends and students, if you want the solution for any of the subject in the field of machine design, namely strength of materials, Theory of Machines, Machine Design, Engineering Mechanics, Finite Element Method, Mechanical Vibrations. Please give the reference in the comment section so that I will solve the problem, prepare a video and upload in my channel. Please subscribe and share my video.